Psalms chapter 62 to the chief musician to Jeduith, Jeduthan, a psalm of David. And you see the psalm uh, chapter 39, the Jeduthan. Truly my soul waiteth upon God. That's something we have to do today. We can't rush the rapture. We can't rush our prayers. We've got to wait on the Lord. From him cometh my salvation. That's the Lord Jesus Christ. Israel was waiting for the, Lord, for the Messiah to come. And when he came, they refused him. They rejected him. He, the salvation, only is my rock. The Bible speaks of Jesus Christ as the rock. The rock in the wilderness that the water came from. And my salvation. Something solid to stand upon and your salvation. He is my defense. Protection. God will protect you. I shall not be greatly moved. Well, you're going to be moved, but not greatly. You have not overcome. The only way a Christian can be overcome and greatly moved is if you resist the Holy Spirit. If you tempt the Holy Spirit. If you quench the Holy Spirit. You will be greatly moved. If you give in to Satan in his, in his uh, instruments, you'll be greatly moved. But if you remain faithful and do that which is right, you're going to have failures, but they're not going to be disasters. Oh, what if death? Well, yeah, absent from the Lord, absent from the body, be present with the Lord. Not a disaster. That's a blessing. Oh, you know, I lose my house. I lost all my fortune. Yeah, but the Bible says God will take care of you if you do right. Paul never had a house. Paul never had his own camel or an ass. But Paul was taken care of. He had a roof over his head. May have been a prison. But what do you want? Taj Mahal? Christ never promised you that. How long will ye imagine mischief against a man? Ye shall be slain, all of you, as a bowing wall shall ye be, and as a tottering fence. Now David changes. He's writing, he's writing and speaking and singing to, about the enemies. not speaking about God. Mischief against a man. You, you, you devise things in your head and in your heart. You want to do evil. You want to do wicked to somebody. And notice he says, imagine. He doesn't say perform. You've got to get this down to realize saved or lost. Even what you think, if you don't do, Jesus said, if a man looking upon a woman and lusts after her in his heart has already committed adultery with her. You don't have to do. You know, you don't have to use the Lord's name in vain by speaking. All you got to do is think it. God will charge us saved or lost by our imaginations, our dreams, and our thoughts. I haven't heard that out of a pulpit. Too many Christians are going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ and they're not going to realize what is going to be judged of their lives. And I hope the Lord will have people listen to these videos and, and wake up before the Lord comes, the rapture, to, to put them under the blood, 1 John 1, 9. Well, I never did anything to the, to the brother. I never said to him, I hate him. But if you think in your heart that you hate him, you've already charged. And John writes in 1 John that you're likened to a murderer. Ye shall be slain, all of you. Killed. As a bowing wall shall ye be. 
It's not straight. It, it's going to fall within time, within troubles, within problems, within the wind, within weather, within men, animals, an earthquake, and a crash. What he's saying, if you imagine evil, mischief against a man, you're not going to stand for long. As a tottering fence. It's going to fall down. Whether you're strong, you're strong as a rock fence or you're like a little wooden fence. It doesn't matter. If you imagine mischief against a man, whether you're strong as, as rocks or strong as wood, you're going to fall. Get it down. Then only consult to cast him down from his excellency. There are people out there who want to put people down. It's a shame. They delight in lies. That's the government of America. And you born again Christians, you voted for the people to be put in the office that are liars. You voted for the Bush son, I think it was, that went against Israel, and when he had that perfect that perfect storm, you put him in office. Don't go cry being about, about President Obama being in office. Let's look at your Republicans. You put Ronald Reagan in the White House, and you allowed by your vote that the entire White House staff was run by a, uh, tea leaves or knocks on the head or whatever Nancy Reagan had. Lies. There are people that delight in lies, and I know from history, there, there is one worse liar that I know. People that not only lie, but they believe the lie that they've told. How do you deal with people like that? If, you know, if you're dealing with somebody and they lied, and you can get them to say, hey, you know what? Yeah, I I'm sorry, I lied. There's hope. If you're in a courtroom and the lawyers are, are, are speaking to you, and you've lied on that stand, and that lawyer can change, you know, get you to come out with the truth, okay. But what if you are a liar and you believe the lie that you told? There is no, there's no hope. And liars, according to John 8, 44, are their father, Satan. A lie is no good, white, black, polka dot, Easter bunny, Santa Claus, whatever the lie is. And I hear preachers do it. And preachers do it with their illustrations. Oh, you know, I was saying, and all of this is, is a preacher story that I've heard other preachers say. And you apply it to yourself in your, in your life that happened to you. And that's a lie. You need the illustration say, hey, I heard a preacher. I heard someone say this. You don't need to apply it to your life like it was real. When are we going to face the fact, Christians, that a lie is a lie and we will be judged for it? Ponder that before we go any further. They bless with their mouth, but they curse inwardly. That's a hypocrite. That's a guy. Oh, how are you doing? Glad to meet you. I hate you. But they're saying I hate you inside. I can't stand you. But you talk nice to him. That's Christianity. You, do, you say one thing, but you, you, you do the complete opposite. They were doing that in Ezekiel time. God told Ezekiel, that, oh, we, they're saying they love your voice and you sound like a, a melody, you sound like music, but they don't do. They don't do the word. It's a lie. 
uh, asking somebody how you feel, how you doing, how you feeling, and you really don't want to know. That's a lie. Sila. Well, it's got to be a tribulation, second advent passage coming. The Antichrist is a liar. The liar. He's going to make the whole world think after we're going that he is the God. The God of forces. My soul, wait thou only upon God. Don't trust in man. For my expectation is from him, God. You know, when you get that check Friday, don't thank your employer. Thank God. Came from God. God's the blessing. Wait for him to reward you. Don't get your rewarding now. Don't get up before the church and do something so you can get praise or, or do something so the pastor can recognize you or your name can be put into a bulletin or it be put in on a trophy or on a plaque or whatever. Let God reward you. He only is my rock. Well, there's a church out there that says they have a rock named Peter. My rock is not named Peter. My rock is named Jehovah Saves. And my salvation. My salvation is the rock is the Lord Jesus Christ. There are churches out there that don't have a rock. There are churches out there that have rock music. He is my defense. Gee, I think we've seen this verse before. Verily, verily. It's a repeat. It's important. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. Something important about that verse. It's repeated twice. It's like a chorus in a song. This is a song. This is a hymn. In God is my salvation. Jeez, look how many times that shows up. How many people are trusting in their works? Their baptism. Their membership. Who they are. What they are. What family they come from. That's not the answer. And my glory. What do you glory in? There's a bunch of Christians now glorying over a, a football team that has nothing to do with them. They missed church last night or church had to, had their Super Bowl party. And for what? what? What did it do for Christ today? Oh, we got visitors in. You got visitors in to get free chicken and get free soda and get a free TV to watch the thing. And if, if you had any preaching, they fell asleep during it. Don't believe me? I see it. The rock of my strength. Let God be your strength. If you're a weak Christian, you don't have God, the rock, God, Jesus Christ, <coughs> excuse me, as your strength. And my refuge is in God. Take it all to God. Everything. God wants to hear from you. God wants you to tell him. There's nothing more important to God than to, to, to stop going on what's on the backside of Saturn or giving a, a robin a, a, a worm or watching a whale give birth or counting the hairs on the president's head where God says, wait a minute, that's one of mine. He's calling me. All right, let me go over and be with them. I don't believe that. Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was a nut in the tree that God picked. Levi. 
was sitting at a little booth doing his job and Jesus reached out to him. Ten lepers were healed. One turned around and came and blessed Jesus. And you know what? He took time for that one. You need a closer walk with the Lord. You need to tell the Lord everything. I heard a preacher one time say, oh, you don't do that. It's nonsense. Listen, you tell God you're angry. What? You're going to hide from God? That makes you a liar we just read. I'm going to lie to God in verse 4. Oh, God, everything is going hunky dory. And God's saying, you're just a liar. That's not what's in your heart. I know what's in your heart. Tell me you're mad at me. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. It says, come, let us reason together. Trust in him at all times. Well, I go rely on the plastic, call my friends, go to the doctor. Jesus said there's nothing wrong with the doctor. They that are sick need a physician. That's not quoting the verse completely. But Asa had a problem with his feet, and he didn't seek the Lord at all. You got a problem, this would be time to say, Lord... I had an issue last night. I had a lump. It was hot. And when I thought of it, I was in between sleeping and trying to fall asleep. I just say, Lord, I ain't got no insurance. No matter what Obama says. I ain't got no money. It's got to rely on you. I could have gone to an emergency room and wasted thousands and hundreds and not thousands of dollars wake up in the morning it's it's not completely gone but it's gone trust in him in all at all times that's 24 hours a day seven days a week 365 days in a year ye people now look at that that is not written to the Jew do you see I-S-R-A-E-L there? Do you see your people, thy people? I don't see it. I see ye people. David's writing to everyone that's in Jerusalem that's doing the will of God that loves the Lord, even if you're Jew or Gentile. You know, Gentiles could go to the tabernacle. Gentiles could serve the Lord and do right. That Ethiopian eunuch that's in Acts chapter uh, 8. Pour out your heart before him. I already said, tell God the truth. If you are not happy, you think you're getting a raw deal from God. What did Job do? Didn't Job speak his mind? And look what happened at the latter end of Job. Do you realize his three friends were at fault that God proclaimed and Job was, was, was counted righteous, was counted right, just? Don't you hide from God. Don't you go in this pile, I never angry with God. That's a bunch of hogwash. And hogs are unclean in the Bible. My parents never understand. My spouse don't understand. Take it to God. Women, let me give you a little fact about life here. Husbands, let me give you a little fact about your wife. They do not understand what you're going through because they are not living what you're living. Don't expect your friend, your loved one to completely understand what you're going through. Even if you've gone through the same thing, you did not go through the same thing. Pain value is different with everybody. 
But I'll tell you, Jesus Christ went through the extremest pain and did not stop going to the cross. God is a refuge for us. Run to God. Selah. Revelation chapter 12. That place prepared by God for the Jews. That's going to be their refuge. That's going to be them pouring their heart out to God. God, that, 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 that thing there in Jerusalem is out to kill us. Lord, we were wrong. There's a big liar in Jerusalem. Chapter, uh, verse 4. Lord, help us. Lord, we ain't got no food. When we can't receive that mark, we violate what you said. Lord, that's not fair. Lord, we're in a situation here that we cannot do what you tell us not to do. But oh, what on earth is going on here, Lord? Surely men of low degree are vanity. The homeless, the poor is a poor. He's vanity. Nothing. But we ain't done. The man of high degree are a lie. Uh-oh. You know the Bible says that we're just dirt and dust and spit. Well, maybe water, maybe not spit. God went out the earth, grabbed a big mud ball and formed it and shaped it. And he even had to breathe into it for it to have life. To be laid in the balance. Uh-oh. What it's saying is, God is going to weigh out that homeless man, and God is going to weigh out that, that rich man that has all the corporations and all that, and the CEO. Whether that, that, that homeless man's a low degree, whether that guy, that rich guy, the CEO, be a liar, God's going to put him in a balance. They, the man of low degree, the man of high degree, are altogether lighter than. They're vanity. They're nothing. They're vanity. There is no man over one over another man. You strip down men, and they men have the pretty much the basic same body parts as a man and a woman. You strip her down, she's got the basic body parts of a woman amongst women. All need air, all need food, all need water. All need to relieve themselves of air and food and water. There's no difference. Even when my grandpa had a, had a, had a tube put in, into his stomach and he had to feed him through this feeding tube, he still needed the food and water. It may not went through the mouth, but he needed the feeding tube. And he needed to be given drink by that too. Well, I know somebody who's blind. You're not, you're not guaranteed sight. I know somebody who's deaf. You're not guaranteed hearing. Hearing and sight is not part of your life. You can live without those things. You can live without a leg. You can live without an arm. But every man has the vital organs inside him. Without them, without them functioning correctly, there's death, a heart, the lungs, kidneys. Man is man. Whether you are a CPO of a big corporation or you're homeless living in a tent, you're going to be judged by God over one what God said to do. Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life to the, to the homeless man. And he says that to the CPO of the big company. You need to get that. Only stupid man. Matter of fact, Jesus told his disciples, only the Gentiles put authority over, over Gentiles. We are the morons. We are the dogs. We are the sick ones. God's people were the Jews. 
where there's a bunch of dogs. We're in it because the Jews rejected the Messiah. And God is using us to show Israel that, hey, you don't want me, I'll find a group of people that will. And he's not done with the Jews. I don't read anywhere in the, in the Bible about a mass saving of, of salvation to Gentiles in the tribulation period outside as a nation and how they treat the Jews, the sheep and the goat nation. And but you know we come up with all these stupid movies that are a lie. And I'm not gonna get into that. I'm gonna move on. I'll get into that forever. Trust not in oppression. What is that? Hey, I'm the big dog. I got the money. You do the work. I trust in that. I'm the boss. Yeah. Pfft. Wait till God points his holy fingers at you. Say I'm the God. You better not oppress anybody, and become not vain. Become not vain in robbery. If riches increase, set not your heart upon them. God gives you money, give it back to God. You know He demands at least ten percent. Ten percent is the minimum. If you do not give ten percent, you ain't doing what God told you to do. Don't you tell me you offer the missionaries and you give an offering and, and you don't give 10%. You don't offer to after that 10%. Give it to God. Set not your heart upon them. For the love of money is the root of all evil. Money will change you. Oh, I'm going to go buy me a lottery ticket. Yeah, you know how many of those lottery people that won are in bankrupt court or has been in bankrupt court with the million dollars they are over a million dollars they got? Because the money changed their lives for the worse. It's called pride and greed. God has spoken once, okay? Twice. Verily, verily. When God repeats it, you better get it down. I have heard this. So God speaketh once, God speaketh twice, three times I, David, have heard this. That power belongeth unto God. Hey! Hey! President Obama is in the White House because of the power of God. Did you get that? You don't have a Republican in the White House because God is in charge of the power. Satan says, I have the power over the earth to put in authority to fall down and worship me. God allows that power to give him to Satan. If God did not want President Obama in office, God would have told Satan, just like he told Satan with Job, no. Give him a Republican. I hope God uses a Republican to destroy America because I will laugh and I will give you a raspberry in your face. Because I'm not into American politics. I'm into God. I give God the glory. I give God my substance. I'll give God the, the respect and the honor and the praise. Not in no office. Not in no things that we go on of a high degree. The power belongs to God. The electric company thinks they have the power and they give me a bill every month. Well, damn the electricity. If God turns off all the power in the power plants in the world and you ain't got a cell phone, you ain't got no ACDC, God is in power. God is in control. If the Amish can live without it, so can we. God is the power. He ain't the, the invisible force and little... Green little guy and a black guy running around, and, and a woman has got Danishes on her hair and stupid movies like all that junk. God! God! The God of the Bible. God had the power to make everything, God has the power to create her, not no big puff.
Also unto thee, O Lord, belongeth mercy. There is no mercy with Satan. You know, there's times in the Bible when God was, was put in a plague. God was doing something. God was angry. And a saint came up to God and said, God. And they prayed and God said, okay, that's it. That's enough. Talk to David. When David's given three options. Egypt was destroyed. That wasn't a lack of mercy of God. Pharaoh never wanted it. Do you want mercy? Are you overwhelmed with something? Seek God. What did it say? Pour out your heart before him. Say, Lord, I can't pay the bills. Lord, I'm, I'm in too deep in this situation. Lord! The Lord may show you mercy. For thou renderest to every man, be not deceived, whatsoever a man soweth, that he shall also reap. You better get this down straight. Every man according to his work. America is going to pay. It has only just begun by rejecting the God of the Bible, by rejecting his word, by rejecting what he has said, by rejecting prayer. You think you're in trouble right now. You can bl blame El Nemo and Vortexes and global warming. God ain't done. America will reap. America has blood on her soil that the people that put the blood there are sitting in a hotel corrections facility. Being paid, being taken care of, being air conditioned, being heated, given medical, given dental, given a security for it, given three meals a day. And God says, You are to slay the murderer. Every man according to his work. You better, you better, the Bible says. If you want mercy, you better show mercy. There was a man that, that man, he had this, this big, huge debt. He was going to be thrown into prison, the Bible says in the Gospels. I believe Luke. He went to the, to, to the guy, he, oh, he boo-hooed, he cried. He said, no, I can't do it. And the guy said, I forgive you. Show the mercy. Everything's wiped off the debt. Then he went away without no more debt, no more money to owe. His check was his. He went to a friend that owed him pity. Nothing. He put his arms around his neck. He said, give me the money. I can't do it. I don't have it, please. And put him into jail and made him pay that little tiny debt. But when the one that he owed money heard about it, he was angry and took that man and put him into jail himself and said, you owe me the debt because you would not forgive him. I forgave you big and you couldn't forgive the little one. You better realize, I'm going to tell you right now, you, and another thing that, that, that is, is, man, according to his work, you need to watch England. England started it. You say, what are you talking about? I'm done. England took the King James Bible and threw it in the garbage can and got their own Bible. The RSV. And I just read something the other day, the Queen can't even fix her leaking roofs. America did the same thing later on with the ASV. The Geneva Bible came to America by the pilgrims, and you won't even allow the Bible no more. Never mind a modern Bible, which is wicked, satanic, and of the, written with a pen of hell. America doesn't even want the Bible at all. 
If the queen is bankrupt and ain't got enough money, you wait to Washington, D.C. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. How much were we in debt? Uh, yeah. Starts with a T-R-I-L-L-I-O-N. We're already in debt. America is spending money she ain't got. Keep on saying you don't want God. Keep on telling us not to pray in a baseball game. Keep telling us we don't want the Bible here. Keep telling us that sin can run rampant and do what you want. And you watch what God will do when he wipes his hands over you, when your cup is filled up. As California, I read the other day, is now thinking about people who can marry beasts. You let the sodomites get married. Now, will you take this dog to be your low? And it's happening, my friend. It's happening. Repent and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Repent means you turn from your sin. Don't you say, Lord, save me, and you continue your wickedness. You're not saved. This is a strong chapter. David, a man after God's heart, who loves the Lord. And you know what he says? Let God be first of all, and first all the time all the time love the Lord with all your heart with all your mind with all your soul completely oh Lord my God when I in awesome wonder consider all the worlds thy hands have made I see the stars I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God his Son not sparing sent him to die, I scarce can take it in. That on the cross, my burden gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. Then sings my soul.